Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to WCG 2019. We're here in the magnificent city of Xi'an, and it's time to jump back into some Clash Royale action. It has been such a crazy week so far. We've seen so many great games in these 1v1s. Oh, yeah. But this city is just so good, man. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so happy to be here. Dude, it is absolutely incredible here. It is so warm as well. <laughs> the, the tropical climate here is just magnificent. My name is Munch Balls. This is Simon joining me on the cast as we finally jump onto the cast as well. We get to see some action for ourselves. I know. This is the first time we've been up here. We've been watching on the sidelines, oh, watching yeah. as many games as we can, but this is going to be so good. Yeah. I mean, the games that we have lined up matter so much to the end of this tournament and it decides who we get to see again tomorrow absolutely and we already know fm is going to be seen again tomorrow he has been destroying throughout this tournament i, I think he's lost one game this entire time and even then he had a hell of a series even with it going down yeah but then you got like juicy j who he did lose to fmg but he has been playing out of his mind against nearly everyone else in this tournament and like Deck selections, we have seen so much. Yeah, absolutely. You can see here, right at the very bottom, match number five is going to be what we're jumping into. It is Juicy J, the player you were just talking about from the USA, up against our Argentino player, uh, Argentinian, sorry, and that's <laughs> going to be Franco stepping on forwards. Yeah, Franco was playing pretty well, but he, I don't know if he's had the results that he really wanted to have. Yeah, he's had a bit of a rocky start to the tournament. Not going to be sitting right at the top of the standings, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. We've got Taoki as well going to be going up against Wen Wen Wen. Then we'll have Arctic Paul up against Franco once more. And then FM will be rounding out the day here for Clash Royale against Wen 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 once again. Yeah, FMGG really does need to uh, win that one just to solidify his first place. But no matter what yeah. happens... He is in the semifinals and finals, or semifinals, I should say. I don't know yeah. if he's in the finals yet. Well, based on today and yesterday's <laughs> performance, he's looking to be in the finals. We'll see if that's all going to come to pass. And then, obviously, after we're done with Clash Royale today, we'll be jumping into the Hearthstone games. We'll let those casters talk about those games. But I want to talk about Juicy J, because as the North American representative, I'm sure a lot of guys at home are going to be cheering for Juicy J. He's definitely one of these players that has been around the scene a little while, and a lot of teams have kind of been eyeing him up he's not been able to step up onto one to one of the major crl teams just yet but he's definitely one of these kind of undercover talents that may well be bursting onto the scene very shortly. i don't even know if it's undercover i'm pretty sure nearly everyone at home knows that juicy j is a quality player yeah. and i think he's just buying his time and waiting to see what happens because i know that he's still i think he's still at school so maybe yeah, he's putting so, yeah. that ahead of you know ahead of crl but People have got to be sniffing around this guy. He is so, so good. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll be able to showcase that as he'll be jumping into his first game here today. But it's curious to see these players that have so much talent, so much opportunity ahead of them. And to see, we, we literally are going to have the privilege of watching his career develop. And I, I expect that he will be picked up by a team. It, it, you know, sometimes you have to wait a little while. Sometimes you just wait for the right opportunity to arise. But once those pieces fall into place, I expect big things in the future for him. Yeah, but we've seen his deck selection has been kind of broad. Like, coming into this, we saw a lot of Lava Hound decks. Yep. All the qualifiers were very Lava Hound heavy. But since we've been here, yes, we've obviously seen Lava Hound Goblin Cage, which is everywhere right now. But mm -hmm. we've also seen Golems being played by other players. So yep. maybe... You know, maybe we'll get to see him play something that's not Lava Hound and yeah. maybe even bait. We haven't really seen much bait this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. This is the rules of the tournament for anyone who's not been watching so far. We have 50k up for grabs for first place. It's going to be a round robin across the course of the tournament. That's best of three. And then tomorrow, the top four players will jump into a single elimination bracket. Best of five to see who will be walking away with those prizes. Yeah, and although they qualify, it still really matters because first place goes against fourth place, second yes. place against third place. So to give yourself probably the best shot of going to those finals, you're going to want to be first place. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why even later on today, FM, even though he's qualified for the semifinals, every game still counts. Round Robin, the way that that format works, everybody plays against everybody. So your first game is just as important as your last game. Every single point, every single win is going to matter. And we expect FM will still be on full try-hard mode later on today. But also, you want to be finishing the group stage with as good of a score as you can. Even outside of seeding, you just want to prove that you're going to be the strongest going into the second. Yeah, and I mean, the Clash Royale teams, 
like the the league teams have got to be watching this thinking oh maybe this is a person we can pick up and just bolster our roster a little bit maybe someone we can train with in the future and then maybe bring into the team like yeah. that's really important for a lot of these players but the 1v1 tournament this is where most players want to make their mark and yeah. winning here that's just going to set them up for a long time yeah not to mention the prize money that's the up for grabs right here especially some of these players that haven't been in this scene a long time maybe this is their first opportunity obviously qualification for this was totally open anybody yeah. could get involved so 50k up for grabs for first place in a 1v1 tournament they don't have to share that with anyone this is totally their own prize that is a massive prize to be winning i mean they'll probably have to share it with a tax man but that's a different well, story yeah. <laughs> i don't know how that works if you're under the age of 18 i have no I have idea no what, idea. what, what do you even spend that much money on if you are under the age of 18 like I, I don't even know, honestly. Trust fund, maybe. <laughs> I yourself. don't know. When I was under 18, it would probably be a bunch of, like, just packs of candy. and like, Yeah, cola bottles, probably. Probably just spend it back on Clash Royale myself. Buy like. every console that's on the market right now. Get all <laughs> every of the phone. smartphones so I can play Clash <laughs> on different style. Maybe even get a few different tablets to try it out yeah, on. Yeah, like, have Clash Royale, one for each <laughs> finger, and you're just playing, like, four different, like, eight you different do, games at the same do time. Do you like the poker pros do, where they're playing, like, all of the different screens, different games <laughs> happening simultaneously? Now, that'd be a stream that I want to watch. I've seen someone try doing that, but it is just really hard yeah. to do. Man. I mean, like, Clash is an intense game. Yeah, and there's no breaks. Like, you see other games come in, and there's that little bit of downtime. Yeah. In Clash Royale, once it starts, it doesn't stop until the end of the game. There's no yeah, real breathing time to switch over and measure out your moves between each screen. Yeah, I mean, I mean the only time really would be when you're waiting for Elixir. But even then, that's unpredictable when that happens. And also, that varies so much between decks. We're jumping into game, though. It's going to be Juicy J on the top side of your screen. Franco at the bottom there as the Rascals come out to try and defend against the Wizard and against this Magma. <laughs> yeah, the Dark Prince played at the back. is going to start charging down the left-hand lane. But it's, it's kind of difficult to see what kind of decks they're playing right now. It does look like Franco may be playing Border. I'm not sure. But the Bart Barrel comes out. There's yeah. a miner, a defensive miner to try and stop that Dark Prince charge there. And the Ice Spirit played at the back with the Ice Wizard following just behind it. Yeah, it's getting cold up on the top side of this map. The bat's just going to be dropped just to cycle some cards here for the side of Franco. And we'll soon have the kind of win conditions for these two players revealed as the next few cards are played. Rascal's going to be dropped once again. And both players really holding the cards close to their chest here. They don't want to give away what the win condition is, but that fireball is a bit of a tell. Yeah, it is, but I, I don't know what's going to uh, to happen here. I, it's, it's really hard to try and gauge who is going to be on top in this match. Like, uh, and there's a minor balloon. Does he have anything? Does Juicy J have anything to stop this balloon? It is getting dangerously close to that tower. Yeah. Is he going to be able to hit it? Oh, beautiful whirlwind comes out. The tornado there to stop things. The Ice Wizard in combination. The slow is going to be just about enough. A tiny bit of a tag with the bomb, but certainly nowhere near what he was hoping for. Yeah, so the death damage does get dealt to the tower there. And a little bit of an advantage here. I would say for Juicy J, he's done a bit more damage overall, but both players are neck and neck in terms of Elixir here. Yeah, and that win condition has been revealed now as well for Franco. So Juicy, J's know, Juicy J knows what he's up against at this stage. He's able to play around the fact that that balloon is going to come down once again, and he needs to be ready for it. Yeah, so he's going to wait to use that Mega Minion against the balloon. Probably the Tornado and the Ice Whiz will come out right about now. The Ice Whiz played at the back. The Barb is going to get, ooh, so close to getting hit. This is the a Mega big Minion. push. The Mega Minion does target the balloon, the balloon, that death damage is going to go absolutely nowhere. And we do see the Dark Prince reloaded on the back here for Juicy J. Yeah, so once again, there was a bit of chip damage coming on through onto Juicy J's tower, but now the Royal Giant will be dropped. Inferno Tower, though, comes out the final card of the deck. That is going to make short work of this Royal Giant. Maybe one shot will go in, though. Does get that singular tag. The Barbarian will go down. Now Dark Prince pushing up forwards. Minor there to block the damage. Yep, perfect block there with the Miner. Had to use what little elixir he had there to try and stop that. But the Inferno Tower, excellent choice here for Franco. Just making sure that Royal Giant doesn't get too much damage in because it's such a card. It's one of those cards that's just so difficult to deal with at times. Yeah, it really is. And now you can see both players have been leaking so much elixir over the last few turns because nobody wants to misplay a card. It's better to hold on 
and not burn something that will be so useful later on. Oh, Mega Minion comes down to try and defend against the Balloon. Yeah, the Mega Minion takes on the Miner first. We see the Tornado getting rid of the Bats and the Rascal. This Balloon is not going to get anywhere near that tower. And the Royal Giant coming down from GCJ. Throws out the Bar Barrel. Perfect. He was baiting for that Inferno Tower. Knew it was going to come down. Beautiful, beautiful prediction there by GCJ, making sure that Bar Barrel does connect and does get one hit on the Royal Giant. And every little is going to matter at this point. Will he be able to finish it off? That's the question, though. That is going to be the question. We've got two minutes left in this overtime. GCJ winning out these trades. You can see an overall tower health. He is ahead. But he's got to be able to finish one of these off. Yeah, and he uses the Tornado here oh. against the Miner. That opens it up for Franco to maybe use that Balloon and just get a lot of damage. The Inferno Tower comes down. It does actually connect on the Dark Prince, which means the Royal Giant is going to be very healthy coming through two shots. And the Bats tried to clean it up. The Ice Wizard was trying to get them, but he's going to get through. So much damage here being done by Juicy J. Is he going to be able to finish it up? The Ice Wizard's going to get one, maybe two. No, just the one. And a defensive Miner played there. Interesting. Yeah, interesting minor placement there. The Whirlwind will be back on circulation. Once again, Inferno Tower comes down against the Dark Prince. The Royal Giant is going to be tagging that up, but he'll go down. And now, maybe the opportunity for the counter push. We need to see something come out from Franco, because honestly, it feels like if this keeps going the way it's going, Juicy J might have this one down. Yeah, Franco is on the back foot. He hasn't really had much chance to get a good push going with that balloon with the Rascals because these, this Royal Giant pressure is just so incredible. Down comes the Inferno Tower again. This time, does connect straight away onto that Royal Giant, which means he should be able to clean this up. But look at that, the, the bar Barrel coming in. And now it's two Dark Princes. The Mega Minion gets cleaned up. The Bats are going to try to do what they can for Franco here. Is this print? Oh, beautiful Miner. <laughs> but he is on such a back foot here. Yeah, but look how quickly we're able to see the cycle from Franco. He's able to defend so much against these Princes. They're just not able to get through. But this Royal Giant has been such a difficulty. The pressure that's coming out from GCJ. Once again, the Inferno Tower will block this. But there's a Fireball hitting every single time this cycle. Yeah, GCJ is down into the Fireball cycle range to finish this match up. So we're going to start seeing him throw out those Fireballs a little bit more regularly than he was at the beginning of the game. We see the Royal Giant there on the Inferno Tower. Dark Prince trying to just clean up whatever he's trying to push through, but the Ice Golem goes down. The Miner probably going to fall here. <laughs> just going to, oh. That's going to be a tie. And that's it. It's a tie. So we're going to get a regame, I guess. Yeah, I think that's the case. All right, what a way to start a series as well. Incredibly close between these two players. Juicy J feeling like he had the advantage, but if you can't finish that game off, then that advantage doesn't add up to anything. Yeah, I mean, the game was so back and forth, but Juicy J just started to get that advantage and just did not let up. And time starts ticking down. I mean, I didn't realize how close we were to the end of the game because yeah. there was just so much action going on. And I'm sure, like, Juicy J was there like, I, I'm going to win this, I'm going to win this, I'm going to win this. Time starts to tick down, and then you just got to yeah. go again. And, and in these kind of matchups, when you have so much pressure coming out from the Royal Giant, as the player with Balloon, it's very difficult to find an opportunity to spend enough Elixir to actually make that counter push. Because you, it's not like when someone places a Golem at the back, you just go for a hard counter push. You've yeah. got your opportunity there. With Royal Giant, they drop it right at the bridge. If you go for a counter push, you're basically trading towers. And that's a very dangerous game to play. Yeah. And, I mean, it's really hard to defend. When you have the Inferno Tower there, that's a good chunk of your elixir that you have to save on each push just yeah. in case that Royal Giant comes down because if you let that go, that it's out. Like, yeah. you, you're you going to have to do so much work on an all-in push. And most of the time that fails, right? Yeah. So saving that five, six elixir to try and defend that, it's just... It was an incredible defense there by Franco to stay yeah. alive. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, when you look at the rest of the deck there, the Inferno Tower is absolutely the linchpin when playing against that Royal Giant because realistically, your bats aren't going to be able to do much when there's a Mega Minion in the mix there as and well. And the Ice Wizard in the back just like exactly. slows them, like finishes them off in one shot. Yeah, the, he just... He didn't really have much to supplement the defense. He, if that Inferno Tower was out of cycle, if Juicy J could have got that Royal Giant down, yeah. when Inferno Tower wasn't in cycle, I think he would have got a couple more hits in. But he never really managed to find that rhythm where he could drop the Royal Giant down without the Inferno Tower coming down straight away. Yeah, and I think that says a lot about this series so far as well, is that 
Literally two more hits from a Royal Giant and a Fireball. That game is over at that point. That's how close Juicy J was to closing it out. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to just tweak it quite over the edge. And those two shots difference, that, that's such a minuscule amount of damage required. But it's so difficult to actually push that forwards when the players are playing at this level. Yeah. Well, we're going to be going on to a Game 1 rematch. Do you think we're going to see the same decks, or are we going to see something different? I think we'll see something mixed up here. But again, in these kind of formats, it's very difficult to predict because the mind games come into play, right? Yeah. It's, it's almost like rock, paper, scissors. Up. OK, I know he's played this deck already. I know he was playing something yesterday. I know this is how the meta looks. But if I change, am I going to call his bluff or who's bluffing who? And like, there's all of the different questions of, if I change my deck, is he changing his? What's he going to change it into? Trying to predict that, but also maybe they just hold on to the deck they're playing. I mean, we're probably likely to see at least one Lava Hound, Goblin Cage deck. Yeah, uh, that will would it not be, surprise Will it be me. a mirror matchup? Like, we have seen so many mirrors this uh, this we weekend have. or this week and so it, far. At least, like, mirrors of a, both, like, Lava Hound decks, but then two kind of slight variants on that. And I, I actually really enjoy watching those kind of mirrors because you get to see the nuances of the matchups. You get to see the different strengths of versions of a deck while the core mechanics of the deck are still the same. Yeah, and you also get to see, like, if they are playing identical decks or near identical, maybe one or two different cards, you get to see how well these players manage their elixir, how well they manage their rotations, yeah. their cycles. So many things can go wrong when you're playing a mirror matchup. Yeah, and, and honestly, if you start to fall behind, it's so incredibly difficult to make up for that deficit. If you fall four elixir behind your opponent in a mirror match, you are almost relying on your opponent messing up to regain that that advantage back. Well, I mean, if your opponent can get that four elixir advantage, you can get a four elixir advantage to try and bring it back up to even. But you're right, it's, it's super hard because once you start spending elixir on a defense and it gets wiped out, yeah. You're, you have nothing to go forward to push. It's incredibly difficult to rebuild momentum at that point because, you know, when, once you're down in Elixir, it's difficult to get incredibly high value trades in a mirror matchup because anything you can get a really great value trade on, so can your opponent. They have the exact same tools in the toolbox. I mean, what are we going to see though? And it, you can't say anything about it because that's just the game. Like, Arrows against Mega Minions, and your opponent has arrows against your Mega Minions. Both of you end up two elixir positive. Like, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's there's, great. There's a lot to be seen. I'm curious if we have. Obviously, we're in the last day of the group stage now. If it's one of these players that hasn't quite qualified for the semifinals, these are the games where it's time to start pulling out those stops to start showing what has been left up the sleeve. So we could have some kooky decks coming out right now. We. Maybe see some clone action, maybe see some freezes, maybe some more cheesy stuff to try and squeeze a win out. I would love to see uh, goblins, like barrel, yeah. mirror, <laughs> We were talking about clone. this on the bus earlier. Yeah, we were talking on the bus. <laughs> I used to see it all the time in production where it'd be like goblin barrel, mirror goblin barrel, clone. Straight onto the king tower, no messing around. Yeah, we were talking, and like the 2v2 situation. Two of you with goblin barrels. You both mirror them. You both clone both 36 goblins onto the tower. I don't even think you need 36 <laughs> goblins to take a king tower down in about half a second. Yeah. It, it's Zap can't save you now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's it's so hard to pull off in 1v1, though. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of elixir you're spending, and you have yeah. to have the perfect cycle and hope your opponent has absolutely nothing to defend. You basically have to hope that their Wi-Fi drops for a second <laughs> so that you can pull it up. Uh, we'll see if we see something like that. Maybe not the Goblin Barrel Mirror strategy, but I'm hoping we see something funky coming out. I've really enjoyed watching the Golem matches that have been coming out, actually. Like, I'm a pretty big Golem player myself, and the Golem Electro Dragon Baby Dragon decks that have been floating around, they are really difficult to play. Yes. Like, a lot and of also really difficult to deal with if your opponent can play it well. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people go, oh, it's, it's Golem, like, there's no skill involved. But that deck... Things can go south incredibly quickly. Yeah. And assuming, let's say you don't get chance to play that Electro Dragon against the Inferno Tower. Say they have bats that have distracted your Electro Dragon. The Golem goes down. You spent so much on a push. It, and especially if they can get a really high value direct damage spell onto your push, the value swing there, the Elixir swing, is just so dramatic that at that point it can be incredibly difficult 
to ever have enough Elixir to set up another Golem push. If they start to put on the pressure at that stage, it falls apart incredibly quickly. Yeah. Do you think we're going to see wall breakers at all? Maybe. I, I, I would love to. We haven't seen it yet this tournament. Yeah. I feel like a lot of the players are sticking pretty close to what is meta right now, yeah. to what they feel is the strongest. So maybe we could see someone with a surprise strategy. But there we go. We, we do have the cage coming on out, which is a little bit more expected in the current meta. Yeah, this is probably going to be the Lava Hound deck from Juicy J. And we do join in about 30 seconds after, but the players are just feeling each other out. And beautiful bar barrel there to distract the Goblin. The Goblin's going to go down. We have Rascals again for Franco. So this does look like it's going to be a repeat deck for Franco, yeah. but Juicy J is bringing a very different deck here. Yeah, changing things up dramatically. The poison comes out. And the guard's going to be there just to deny this Rascal getting any damage down. Mine are going to come in just to escort the guards over towards the tower. We'll get a couple of hits in, but the bats should make short work of these guards. So far, things relatively even, but the loon comes out. Another miner. The cage is going to be there. Yeah, the cage. Beautiful distraction for Juicy J. Drus. Take that down. Oh, the baby I dragon. think we might get hits anyway. He's going to get a hit. One. Look at the damage. This might be two hits. This is absolutely huge for Franco. That's already a tower going down. Juicy J falling behind. Yeah, I mean, what does he have here to kind of slow down that, that balloon? He had the baby dragon. The, the goblin cage just disintegrated instantly. And he doesn't really have any other anti-air in his deck to help deal with that balloon. So he's going to find it kind of difficult here. Next time the balloon goes down for Franco, will he be able to defend it again? I just don't think he can. Yeah, this is going to become a very quick, tough game here. Franco drops the Inferno Tower incredibly early there. I think it will just about be able get a good amount of damage down. But actually, the Lava Hound is still surviving a little bit. The bats are going to be able to finish off at the end. That Dragon is not going to be there in time to be able to protect him from the bats. And that's going to be well defended there by Franco in the end. Yeah, and the bats are going to take out this baby dragon here with the uh, Barbarian there distracting him. There's some high value bats right there. So much elixir for Franco here. He is in full control. There's the Inferno Tower and it yeah. connects straight away onto that Lava Hound, popping it almost instantly. The good thing is for Juicy J, he does get some poison value taking out the back lines. Is he going to be able to get purchased with this Inferno Dragon? With the Rascals coming out, it doesn't look defensive. Miner against the offensive Miner for Juicy J. Wonderful defense here for Franco. Barely taking any damage from these Lava Hounds. Yeah, and we were talking about this deck before the game, this double Dragon deck with the Lava Hound. This is a masterclass on how to defend against these kind of pushes. Obviously, that was the Golem version. This is going to be the Miner version with the Lava Hound, but the balloon, just that singular push, the cage nowhere near enough to defend against the balloon push. Well, that's a very, very quick victory coming out and, and a dramatically different result to what it looked like Juicy J was the advantage in game number one, but in game two, Franco giving a run for his money. Franco just took him to school there with the balloon play. I mean, that deck, what do you have? So you have Baby Dragon, you have an Inferno Dragon. Yeah. And then there's nothing else really to help deal with that balloon. The poison, I guess, a little bit. It, it doesn't help all too much. Maybe maybe it'll stop one hit. But you're still going to take so much damage from the balloons. It's certainly not a counter. It is certainly not a counter at that point. And, and it goes back to what we were talking about before that game started, is the mind games that come into play when you're in a best of three series, especially when you tie the first game, you've both seen a deck from each other. It's like... Is my opponent going to change decks? Obviously, GCJ predicted that he would. Case It wasn't the case in the end. The balloon comes out, and he just was not prepared for it. Yeah, it looked like Franco's first deck was designed purely to take out that Lava Hound yeah. and uh, Goblin Cage deck. So in the first game, he didn't really have a chance to show quite how strong that deck is. Yeah. But then, you know, second game, GCJ goes to a very comfortable pick. Like, he has been playing a lot of Lava Hound, yeah. Goblin Cage. Goes to his comfort pick. Franco's just like, well, I think you're going to go for your comfort pick one more time. And this is what happens. Like, the mind games, as you keep saying, you're rightly yeah. saying, the mind games between these players, they're probably sitting across from each other here, <laughs> looking at each other. Staring each other death down. Death stares, man. <laughs> death stares between the players. Yeah. And, and honestly, once you go 1-0 down in a series, that can easily put you on kilter, you know, or put you off kilter, sorry. 
Clash Royale, I'm sure you guys at home know, once you tilt, it's very easy to lose control of your game at that point. It's very easy for things to just get out of control. Juicy J is going to have to keep his cool here moving forward in the series. Try and figure out how to recoup from this one. Because Franco now 1-0 up in the series. He's going to be feeling comfortable moving forwards. But Juicy J, he's looking great in the standings right now. Yeah. Coming into the series, he feels like the favorite. It's still very possible that he wins two games back to back here. It is. I mean, this is Clash Royale. Anything can happen. And, you know, I'm expecting to see fireworks the next game yep. from Juicy J. Like is he that a new card? <laughs> <laughs> what would it even do? Um, <laughs> Leaks. <laughs> but, I mean, we were talking to a few of the, the casters of, like, Clash Royale, and they, they're talking to Juicy J quite often, and they're saying he is gunning for yeah. that first spot. He wants to take it off FMG. And, I mean, he needs to show up now. He yeah. needs to take game... Is it? Would you say game three or is it game two? I mean, game one was a rematch. Uh, I, I guess it's game two since game one essentially doesn't count with the tie. Yeah. I would say for the sake of best of three, for the sake of it being un easy to understand, this is game two in the series since the first game was a tie. And so at this point, it's definitely the onus is on Juicy J to make things happen here. And I'd love to see what deck he's actually going to bring here because, you know, uh, once again, it comes back to these mind games and it is blind picking. So yeah. There is no outright correct strategy to go forward with blind picking. It depends on your opponent. And watching VODs of your opponent, watching their tendencies in the best of three can help you make informed decisions. But at the end of the day, it's like when you're playing rock, paper, scissors, right? You can never fully predict what your opponent is going to do. You can never quite see what they're going to go with. And it, it can always throw a spanner in the works. Yeah, and there are also no ban picks here. Like, exactly. You, you cannot ban out a card like... You see other formats where you get to choose one card, so most people probably now would ban Lava Hound to get rid of that deck. It, it does get rid of quite a few decks. Yeah. But without the ban pick, there are just so many possibilities. Like The meta is incredibly diverse, but yeah. the staple cards seem to be always there, right? We always see Barbarian Barrel. That card is everywhere in every Pretty deck. much every single deck, yeah. I mean, I can't even think of a deck that where Barbarian Barrel isn't your number one choice. Yeah, and, and even if there are some decks that these players aren't putting Barbarian Barrel into, it's very feasible that you can swap a card and put Barbarian Barrel in. It's not like it doesn't fit in the deck. It's just a player choice or a, a player preference not to run that card or, or they feel like they can get value out of something else. But honestly... I mean, we were talking about this earlier as well. Barbarian Barrel is such an incredibly high-value card. In so many situations, yeah. that card is the card to play. I mean, it takes out barrels. It takes out what, skeleton. It takes out a lot of ground units. Yeah. And if it doesn't take them out, it distracts them. We've seen so many clutch catches with the Barbarian Barrel against yeah. Rascals that are about to dash into the tower. I mean, we've seen the Barbarian Barrel, even in that game, just dragging units away from your tower again. Yeah. Like they get so close, the Barbarian Barrel pops, and he's just like, yeah, all right, C yeah. come and attack me. Bring it on. And, and the fact that it's only two Elixir as well. I mean, while you're distracting them, while you have this awesome distraction tool and this awesome clear tool, you're also cycling through to the cards that you're looking for, your win conditions and your ways yeah. to counter the push. Yep, well, we are about to get into get the next game here. Let's see what these players are going to be bringing. As you see, Franco is one up against Juicy J. So Juicy J in red at the top and Franco in blue at the bottom of the screen. So the Rascals coming out once again for Franco. He might just be sticking with this same deck three games in a row. The Dark Prince, though. We could actually be looking. Oh, no, oh. here we go. Never mind. Royal Hogs come out. Yeah, good fireball there from Juicy J, making sure those hogs don't get too much damage onto the tower. The Rascal Girl is going to go down without getting a shot in. The Ice Wizard here is going to try to do the same to the other Rascal Girl and succeeds. Yeah. Interesting. Hogs at this point in 1v1. I mean, we see them very rarely in yeah. 1v1. And it's we actually saw some hogs coming out during the European qualifiers in Athens. And it was... It was, a, it was a strange deck that we saw coming out, but actually, the pressure that you can put on, they only cost five elixir, which is a decent investment, but also, 
you have to invest a lot to defend against them. And even when people spend Elixir defending against them, quite often they get the chip damage in regardless. There's at least a few hits coming in from the Hogs, and that's where they really bring it down. And this is where they really shine, when you can just switch from right to left, right to left the whole time, never really giving your opponent a chance to set up in a lane and just slowly start picking away. The Hogs are an incredible card to bring in here, and Franco does not look happy. He's not, even though he's been getting these chips in, even though he started off actually okay, he's getting frustrated. He is 1-0 up in the series, so he should be able to keep his cool for now at least. But, I mean, we've seen creative use of emotes across the course of the tournament so far, <laughs> and uh, especially in the Invitational as well. I'm curious if that's going to be a theme of today. As one of the rascals just gets eliminated, but that's going to be a fireball down. Mortar comes into play as well. Royal, Hag Royal Hogs will be in rotation soon, but that's going to be a Royal Giant in the left, in the right lane. Sorry, I don't know what there is to defend against this. He doesn't seem to have much. He does throw down a rascals here. He does have the archers. He's slowly going to pick away. But this is a deck I've seen so much being played, especially in CRL. The Rascal Mortals, the Rascal Mortar that just does so, so well. And actually flubs the, uh, flubs the rocket there, trying to get a little bit of extra damage. But now, what is he gonna do to defend here? There is the mortar that does distract the Royal Giant. Is he gonna have enough here to be able to take it down? The answer is no, has to throw down another set of archers, but they're going for the Barbarian. And the, the Royal Giant, oh my goodness, so much damage getting done there. 800 HP remaining, and Franco is starting to fall drastically behind here. Ice Wiz is gonna be there to deny any damage from these archers, the Rascals come down once again. Royal Hogs go down into the left lane. Dark Prince is now going to be here as well as a Barbarian Barrel as this push is starting to build up on the right-hand side here for Juicy. Barbarian Barrel will stop the Dark Prince pushing on forwards. Archers come down, but there is the Royal Giant. Mortar has to be here to defend right now. Drops it right in front of the Giant for one or two hits. It's going to be such a huge difference maker. Still two and a half minutes on the clock right now. Yeah, Franco there was hoping that he could get a Mortar hit on the, the, on the right-hand side tower. But these Hogs actually didn't get Fireball this time a lot of damage being done 15 26 remain on that top left hand tower yeah fantastic stuff coming out from franco maybe there's a chance that he can pull this one back if he can defend against these royal giants like he just did in that last push maybe there's still a chance for him to take this series 2-0 the rascals now pushing up in both lanes snowball comes down just to slow down that dark prince but he is gonna still connect onto the the mega rascal yeah, it does seem as though Franco has found his defensive cycle against this deck. And maybe he can slowly chip away, but there is only 1 minute and 45 seconds left. And the one thing that Mortar decks do incredibly well, if they're behind, they can just hold the game to a tie. Yeah, that's often the case here. And that'll be very, very difficult for Juicy J if two games in a series, both of them with him at the helm go into tie situations, it's very difficult to maintain your mentality at that stage of the series. Yeah, your composure is really tested, and that is the medal of any player who wants to make a name for themselves. How well can you deal under pressure? And right now it's looking like Juicy J is doing really well at applying the pressure, but when the pressure comes to him, he hasn't been that great at it. But Franco, Franco is just absorbing push after go. push, and the mortar is going to come down to distract right at the last minute again here. And such good play. The this fireball does the come down. Though. Here he goes. One hit will go in for sure. Maybe a second one here. He's going to be slow. Does get a second hit in. 300 HP. We're starting to get into spell cycle range here. Dark Prince is going to start to charge. Doesn't quite get the hit in there. The Rascals will drop. The two fireballs will finish this here for Juicy J. So will he be able to manage that cycle without dying first? It looks like he's trying to get into that zone seconds. where he can fireball. There's the Royal Giant fireball. It's got to be coming soon. Mortar well, comes on down. Dark Prince is going to be behind here along with that Ice Wizard. Royal Giant does drop in the end, as does the Dark Prince. So the push is thwarted. Ten seconds remaining. He needs to be able to find that fireball in the cycle. Whirlwind comes out for the first time in the entire game. Three seconds gonna, remaining, two, the fireball comes on in, it's just in time. Juicy J takes the game. Le talk about leaving that to the <laughs> last that's, second. That's what you call a buzzer beater right there. That was so close to going horribly wrong for Juicy I didn't think he had J. it. No, it looked like half a second 
less. Yeah. Like, if he waited half a second more, that would have been over. Yeah, bear in mind, there is no, like, zeroth second in this game. Yeah. Once that one turns into a zero, the game's over. Even if the fireball's in the air, it's done. So that was literally to the wire. And now, one apiece in this series. The deck working out finally for the likes of Juicy J. And now, it's Franco that has to go back to the drawing board and figure out his next strategy. Yeah, well, he tried something different that time with the Mortar Hogs. He, he played it really well. He yeah, was he holding on, but unfortunately for him, the, the fireball cycle for Juicy J was just too strong. Yeah. Like, he had so many cheap cards in that deck just to cycle back through to that fireball. And once it got into, like, the 400 range, that's it. Two fireballs and you're done. Yeah, at that point, you just got to hope that they can't cycle quick enough. There's not that much that you can do. And honestly, it was impressive to see the Royal Hogs coming out there just to try and almost try and bait your opponent into fireballing defensively because if you can get that defensive fireball out at that point you've guaranteed yourself a tie you've managed to keep yourself in the series but the dark prince being in the yeah i mean he was never gonna fire like once he got down to about five six hundred he's never gonna fireball those hogs so yeah. the dark prince there cleans up it, it doesn't do as well as a fireball does to defend against that kind of push yeah but it does enough to just slow it down. And when you have as much HP as Juicy J did then yeah, to, exactly. to just play around with, there was, there was no need to fireball. So yeah. then he just throws them down onto the tower and takes it. I mean... When, when you get to those late stages of the game, your tower health is a resource. You've got to think of it in the same way that you think of Elixir. It's like, okay, can I take this hit? If it's not a push that can be followed up on, if it's not something that's going to turn into the tower going down, and you're close to taking a tower on the other side, just accept the damage. Use that as a resource. Take that as an elixir advantage in of itself and turn that into a victory in overtime. Yeah, I mean, I got to give props to Juicy J there for the composure too. Like, yeah. we've all been in that situation where there's about 30 seconds left and <laughs> all we do is just throw down that fireball, throw out every cycle Panic. card, wait for that four elixir to come back to finish off the tower and then you go, oh wait, there's an inferno dragon on my tower. Oh, well, I didn't yeah. try to defend it. Um, and then suddenly you're in uh, a tie situation, and then suddenly you go into the seventh game in a best of three, and then, uh, <laughs> I mean, most players haven't been in that situation, but <laughs> I imagine it's tough in that scenario. Juicy J, though, managing to get that victory. I think that is such an important victory as well for yeah. him, just in that, you know, if you go into two ties, both of them when you have the advantage in game, like we were saying during the game, maintaining your composure in that situation is just so difficult. And especially when you're against another player that already has a win on the board. All they have yeah. to do is just finish things off at that stage. So much pressure on the shoulders of Juicy J, but he manages to push through. I mean, great for him. I'm sorry. There we go. Okay. Great you're for forgiven. him. Don't worry. Yeah, my headset keeps pulling on my, my shoulders. Um, but yeah, I mean, great for him. He does need this win, though. If he wants to get that first place that... He is going around saying, I'm going to get first place. I'm gonna, if he's going to get it, he has to win game three here yeah i mean e fm is putting the pressure on for him yeah. right now in terms of the standings fm has been playing exceptionally across the course of this tournament so right now honestly the most important thing for juicy j is making sure that he doesn't end fourth seed because if or in fact even if he ends third seed if fm ends up somehow second seed he basically just wants to avoid fm in the semi-finals I be on the opposite side of the bracket yeah, I mean, you want to avoid him purely so you get, like, second place at least. Yeah, Because exactly. FM is playing the clash of his life right now. And sure, Juicy J could take him out. Yeah. But, I mean, it's nice to try and avoid him so you don't end up going to that third place match where exactly. you can walk away with nothing if you finish fourth. It's like, Juicy, I, definitely not trying to say that Juicy J can't take on FM. I am super excited to see those guys go head to head in a best of five. I cannot wait to see that matchup. However, if I am Juicy J or FM, I don't want to play that opponent in the semi-final because one of you is going home at that point. You want to go into the final against your best opponent because you want an easy run through the semi-final. You want to guarantee you're winning at least 30k this tournament. There are no easy wins at That's this point true. in the That's tournament. Like, everyone has been so good. And we are about to get into the final game here between Juicy J and Franco. Let's see how it goes here. This uh -huh. should be good. And both players now just waiting it out. Yeah, the classic that standoff here. What's both. the longest standoff you've ever seen in Clash? 
Uh, I'm trying to think. I've seen a three and a half minute standoff. Really? Yeah. It goes into overtime. It's still out there just emoting each other. <laughs> I've never seen one go into overtime. I've seen some pretty long ones, a couple of minutes. I've never quite seen an overtime one. Well, anyway, here we go. We do have the Lava Hound and the Baby Dragon for Franco here. And it does look... It's hard to see what's coming in the archers. And there is the Royal, the royal Furnace. There is the Furnace. <laughs> well, but look at this. So much damage getting done. The Dark Prince is there. The, everything is just oh going wrong here. Is this going to be a change. tower? What a way to start the game here for Franco. One more shot is going to finish that one off. Franco to a flying start right here. And Juicy J already against the ropes within under a minute and a half. What happened there? It looked as though he was going to deal with it. Then the furnace placement was a bit questionable because it was in the middle of everything. And then the tower just goes down. Once that, once that was gone, that's four elixir he could have used possibly to try and defend with something else. And now a beautiful Nado there pulling away that Inferno Dragon. But my goodness, that Inferno Dragon has blood lust going after that P.E.K.K.A. <laughs> I did, I, I, what do you even say to that? That feels like every ladder game I play Tornado <laughs> on. The, the units just have a mind of their own. They've decided that he wants to take on that Pekka, and well, I mean, more power to him. He's going to be able to take it down in the end. That's going to be so frustrating for Juicy J as well. I mean, he should have he should have realized that was going to happen because the Pekka was the closest target for that Inferno Dragon to yeah. try and go towards. But I don't think he was expecting it to go as quickly towards it. Maybe, you know, fly a little bit closer to the middle before going there. But Poison comes down, does take out the Tombstone, the Skeleton's there, but the Inferno Dragon and the Lava Hound here are going to be able to take it. Tries to Tornado. Nice. And again, look at the bloodlust on that Inferno this Dragon. This Pekka's going to connect. Oh, Graveyard at the very last split second there that Pekka's denied. Yeah, and it doesn't look as though Franco's going to get a similar push this time round. No success on this push, but still his defense is looking good. There are 10 seconds, and I don't know what Juicy J could do. He needs a miracle to finish the tower here. Nothing can do that much damage. What a performance, though, coming out from Franco right here. Everyone was saying Juicy J was the favorite coming in. Juicy J himself saying he's gunning for first seed. He's gunning for the win in the whole tournament for Franco. Coming out of the woodwork here and showing that he is not a player to be underestimated. Great win for Franco. Honestly, he hasn't had the greatest performances this weekend. Everything that could have gone wrong yesterday when he was on the stage went wrong. Yeah. But today, it looks as though he's gone home. He took a bath, maybe had a massage, you know, yeah. just relaxed, watched some replays comes back and he looks refreshed and he looks hungry today yeah and and it's worth mentioning that in both situations when he had opportunities in both of his wins he just rolled forward destroyed a tower within seconds both times he had a mondo push that just took a tower within a 20 second push but then every other game his defensive play was exceptional holding juicy j off getting incredibly high value trades and turning dire situations into winning situations i think this means that franco could qualify i don't know if he got a win earlier i'm not actually sure we're gonna have to check the standings when we get the chance but Four wins is basically what everyone is gunning yeah. for here. Four wins means you qualify straight up. Yes. And so, that Franco is now on three wins, is that? At least three wins, yeah. Okay. So at least three wins. We'll have to check his results once we can take a look at the standings. But Franco could well make it on into the bracket. And you, you don't have to have four wins to qualify. It depends on everyone else's results across. So... As with all round robins, nothing is set until the final game of the round robin is played. Then we'll be able to see clearly who is going to move on into tomorrow's games. But importantly, taking a win against Juicy J there says that once, if he can get into the bracket, if he has qualified for our semifinals tomorrow, I mean, it proves what you were saying earlier. I, I, I said you want an easy semifinal. There are no easy semifinals. And Franco has absolutely proven that taking down Juicy J is showing that. Everybody in this tournament is a serious contender. Yeah, I mean, Arctic Pool is struggling as well, but we're going to be back very shortly here once we come back from this commercial break. Stay tuned, guys. We'll be back with some more Clash Royale action.